So let's get into it, man. First thing I want to ask you, man, who do you think is going to win NFL MVP this season? There are, you know, a lot of candidates who are probably going to reside in the AFC because, you know, the AFC right now is a madhouse for talent right now. Meanwhile, you look at the NFC, really a lot to be decided. You get what I'm saying? Like, we kind of have an idea who's going to be there in the AFC, but we don't have an idea. Not because, like, we don't know who's going to be good. It's just that so many good teams, somebody's going to get left out. So when you look at the MVP race, I mean, should be pretty interesting. So throw, throw me a name. So it's kind of hard for me to predict who's going to actually win the award right now. I will probably make an MVP prediction on my channel eventually. And I'll probably, I'll kind of make one here as well, but I kind of have three names in my head. I will say, I think a dark horse is actually the reigning two-time MVP, Aaron Rodgers. A lot of people are going to count the Packers out just because they have questions at the wide receiver core, but the defense is really good and the run game is there. Aaron Rodgers, we know he, we know he's an elite quarterback. He's actually in the past uh, three years, I believe eight and one without Devontae Adams. So he plays some of his best football when he doesn't force feed the ball to a number one wide receiver, not that Devontae, you know, you don't want him in the lineup because he's excellent. He's elite. I wish he was still a Packer as a Packers fan, you know, but I think, I think Rodgers will still be in the conversation. I was tempted to say Josh Allen, but here's the reason why I'm not going Josh Allen. Because the Buffalo Bills put a lot on Josh Allen's plate where they asked him to run the football and basically be the run game. You know, the offensive line is good, but it's not elite, like where he has to kind of make up for that. You know, the weapons are really, really good, but I don't think they're, I don't think they're the best weapons in the league. So the point I'm trying to make is I don't think Josh Allen is quite at the level he's close. You know, I think he's close to Mahomes. I think he's close to Rodgers. But there's a level of inconsistency to his game. And I think we saw that last year versus Jacksonville, you know, versus the Colts at home where there were some stingers in there. Pittsburgh, the first game of the season, didn't play his best football. So I think Josh Allen is arguably a top three quarterback in the NFL. It's just that I'm waiting to see the consistency from him. Maybe it's this year to where I can say he's going to be that legit MVP candidate. I think the Buffalo Bills will win games because of their defense as well. So Josh Allen's a name that I thought about, but really I have, I have three names. I thought about Deshaun Watson. That's one guy, Russell Wilson and Matthew Stafford. Okay. Those to me are going to be the top three candidates. I'm interested to see how Deshaun Watson does in Cleveland because are they going to make the offense centered around him where he's going to be throwing the ball over the field or are they going to actually take the ball out of his hands and rely on Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt? That is going to definitely determine his MVP odds, how much Cleveland actually is going to want to run the football. But also, how many games is he going to play? Is there a potential suspension? But this is the best situation that Sean has been in in his pro career. He's got a great offensive line, a great run game, a head coach I have questions about, but the offense that Kevin Stefanski runs, it fits to Sean Watson. And I'm sorry, Baker Mayfield fanboys. I, I think Baker <laughs> – a good quarterback when he's healthy, but Deshaun is clearly way better than Baker Mayfield. So I think he'll make Amari Cooper a star once again as well. Uh, Russell Wilson, you know, he's in a pretty good situation as well, you know, with the weapons he has in Denver. The offensive line is a little questionable, but, you know, we'll see. He can make most offensive lines work. I don't think the offensive line is bad. I just don't think it's, like, great, you know, but we'll see. My problem with Russell Wilson is he's learning a new system this year, and you know, we'll see if he takes off, but I think there will be some growing pains. However, he has everything going for him in Denver. There's a reason why he left Seattle. I think he's going to be in the MVP conversation just based off of narrative. Like people are going to watch and tune into Broncos games and storylines matter in these awards. And my last candidate is Matthew Stafford. He, ca he came off his best season this past year, throwing for 41 touchdowns, almost at 5,000 yards, passing, completed 67% of his throws. Now, the Rams did lose Andrew Whitworth, so that does worry me a little bit. The protection, it's a little questionable. But if Stafford didn't throw so many interceptions last year, he might have won the dog on MVP. So while I do think the offensive line is a little bit of a question in L.A., I think Matthew Stafford has a chance to really push some steam towards that MVP award this year. If all of those guys are healthy, though, man, give me Deshaun Watson. I'll take Deshaun Watson to win in Cleveland. I don't think it's the year he wins the Super Bowl in Cleveland, but I think this is the year where people are going to realize just how great Watson is because uh, assuming he plays all the games, right? 
you know, because if you don't play all the games, you're out, of the, you're kind of out of the race. So if Watson plays most of the games, I think he's going to take off immediately. I know he hasn't played in a year, but right now at this very moment, he's my pick to win MVP just, just because I think the offense is perfect for him. I do think Cleveland has a chance to win that division. I don't, I, everyone's high on Baltimore. I think Baltimore is a little bit overrated. That might be a hot take, but that's just my opinion. Uh, Pittsburgh, we talked about them several times. I, I just have questions. Don't, don't, don't start it. Don't please. I, I, I just have some questions about Pittsburgh. I think Cleveland's a better team. And Cincinnati, you know, we'll see. But how will they handle expectations? Cincinnati has the expectations that, hey, we need to get back to the Super Bowl. And while Cleveland has eventual Super Bowl expectations with Deshaun Watson, it's pretty clear that Cleveland kind of thrives when they're under the radar. And I think that people are sleeping on Deshaun just because he hasn't played in a year. And I think he's still an elite quarterback. I think that you can make the argument. So I think Deshaun Watson would probably be my pick right now. The storyline is there. The situation is there. And he's a darn good football player. Man, I don't really got too many candidates as you. As a matter of fact, I only got one. But, I mean, I can list off a couple guys just, just to name some. So, like, Matthew Stafford, I don't know. Like, I think he's going to be there, but I just feel like he's always going to have, like, the turnovers. And, like, last year what really kept him from getting in that MVP momentum was he had a really bad stretch. Like, you talk about the inconsistency with Josh Allen, but almost every quarterback outside of Aaron Rodgers had, like, a little stretch. Like, Matthew Stafford had a stretch, like, near the tail end of the season where he was – chalking up interceptions like it was nothing um this is like when they lost the 49ers like they had dropped a couple games but like I think he's definitely gonna be there I don't really know about Deshaun simply for the fact that even though they're gonna have upgrade at quarterback like when you have a coach that likes to run the football like nothing really changes it's just that you know like when you have a better quarterback however it's like you can trust him in more situations like for example Baker Mayfield like you just want to run the football as much as possible because dude was injured. And on top of that, he wasn't that effective. So you was kind of trying to run the ball to keep the ball. You was trying to play keep away from Baker. However, with the Sean Watson, you know, like the run game isn't there. You, you can go ahead and get it done through the air. But I just don't really know if Cleveland has enough depth like they have had in the past when it comes to wide receiver. I definitely feel like outside of Amari Cooper, there are a lot of question marks there. However, like, I got to go with Joe Brr. I'm going with, I'm going with Joe Brr. I, I did it right. Oh, you see, I couldn't do it again. But I got to go with Joe Burrow, man, because I just got done doing a video about Cincinnati or a segment that I just uploaded. Like, Cincinnati went from having the worst off the line of the league last year to having one of the best in over the span of one off season. We already knew about left tackle Jonah Williams. He was their best offensive lineman, the only one who looked competent at blocking at times. Um, you sign center tech Horace, you bring in off the guard Alex Kappa, you also bring in Lael Collins, right tackle from the Dallas Cowboys. Now, don't the, the only really concern I have, well, the only question mark on the off the line is going to be Carmen Jackson. Now, Carmen Jackson was drafted last year in the second round out of Clemson, and like he didn't start a lot of games, he started a few games, he played sparingly, but like he wasn't the greatest so like eager to see where he comes along in his development but you look at Joe Burrow you look at the season he had last year 31 touchdowns 14 interceptions through for 4,611 yards imagine what he's going to do this year behind the better offensive line now that he's going to have more than two seconds to throw the football like a lot of people keep asking like is Cincinnati going to fall off like I don't think so simply for the fact that they have Joe Burrow like I don't really trust Zach Taylor in a sense, but I trust Joe Burrow because Joe Burrow, like, he he's money. Like, against the spread, he doesn't lose that much. Like, he's free money. Against the Super Bowl, he covered. Joe Burrow, easy money. So, like, I just feel like as long as he stays healthy and, you know, unless, like, things really hit the fan, like, I just feel like he's going to be my clear cut just because, like, all the weapons he's going to have, he's going to have the volume, he's going to have a better offensive line, more time to throw the football. Like, I won't be surprised if dude ends up throwing 60 touchdowns. Like, I know it sounds unrealistic, but I think it's a possibility that it could happen. Because one thing about Cincinnati, like, I was talking to somebody earlier, he was like, Cincinnati probably could have won the Super Bowl if they ran the ball more. And I went back and I looked at the numbers and whatnot, and, yeah, Joe Mixon was averaging, like, over four yards per attempt. I don't know why they stopped running the ball. So it's like, 
it seems like they just like throwing the football around to everybody. So you think about what um Jamar Chase did last season. That's a rookie. Imagine what he's going to do this season with another year of development. I think he can end up becoming something special. Like I think he probably could go over 2,000 yards, but I'm going to go with Joe Burrow as my pick to win NFL MVP this upcoming season. So it's like, yeah, man. So Joe Burrow is my pick to win MVP. Like, I mean, Justin Herbert could be there, but I just feel like offensive line, probably the best receiving core in the NFL. Like, I'm just going with Joe Shiesty. See, you mentioned Zach Taylor. I don't think Zach Taylor's bad, but I don't think he's great. So the coaching to me is kind of average in Cincinnati. He could prove me wrong. When you get to a Super Bowl, you out coach Danny Reed in a big game. That should matter. Very but good at just, adjustments. Yeah, yeah. But it's just one of those things where in the Super Bowl, I thought he got vastly out coached. I'm still not sold on Zach Taylor. But I'm not picking Joe Burrow just because I don't know how the Bengals are going to do. Because I don't want to compare them to Washington because – I was not as high on Washington this past year. Everyone was kind of high on them and said they potentially could win the division. I said, yeah, talent-wise, they maybe could, but it's all about how you can handle expectations. And I keep saying time and time again, these franchises like the Bengals, the Browns, the Washington Commanders, like they have to prove to me they can actually come into a season, handle Super Bowl expectations, and win games. And Joe Burrow might play at an MVP level, but I don't know how many games Cincinnati is going to win in a tough division. So that's where I would give the pushback there. But I don't have a problem with that. I really don't. You see, before we move, the only thing I have to say against that is that those franchises you just made, they don't have a Joe Burrow. You see, like, when you have a elite quarterback like a Joe Burrow, like, Joe Burrow is way better than what Carson Palmer was in year or two. Like, Carson Palmer was a very good quarterback. But he wasn't good enough that he could make up for the lack of inefficiencies that you may have at other positions. Like what Joe Burrow did behind that offensive line last year was nothing but impressive. And the fact that they won a playoff game, despite the fact he got sacked, what, 11, 10 times, like was even more impressive. Like, I feel like I feel like. It's going to be a team that ends up missing out on the postseason, which is why I haven't been willing to put money down on Pittsburgh. You get what I'm saying? Because I, I do feel like there's a good chance we end up missing out, not because I think we'll have a losing record, but simply for the fact that I think the seventh seed is probably going to go to a team that has at least 10 wins. I don't really know if we could be able to get the 10 wins. We might be stuck at nine again, but 